coming up on this episode. The show was brought back for a second season, but big changes were made. Harlan Stone was gone for good. Plan a court. But so were many others. As in the new Dick Van Dyke show, aside from his TV family, all the other characters were gone for good, too. Welcome to a special edition of I Did Not Know That. I'm starting a new category called Why They Failed, since viewers seem to really enjoy looking at actors and shows that didn't quite make it. Please like and subscribe. Please stop saying don't forget to like and subscribe. Sure, but how are we going to get followers? <sighs> In previous videos, I've talked about TV stars like Andy Griffith, Dick Van Dyke, Lucille Ball, who all had very successful TV series where the series was named after them, but when they attempted to come back and do it again, they failed, sometimes very badly. There have been a few that have been successful with a comeback series, and Bob Newhart was a name I had mentioned. A couple sharp viewers brought up the fact that actually Bob Newhart had the same thing happen to him in a third series that he did in 1992, simply named Bob. At first I said I hadn't realized that he'd done one at that time. I had completely forgotten about that 1992 show. But when I began looking up some info on it and read that he played a comic book artist, it came back to me. And I did recall the series. I have to admit I never watched an episode of it at the time. Fortunately, the series is here on YouTube, so I began to watch it so that I can not only tell you about it, but also speculate on why it only lasted 33 episodes. I think the surprising thing is that he did this one so very shortly after completing his second series called New Heart. I think it's got to be challenging to do a completely new series right after finishing a very successful and long-running show. Viewers get kind of blocked into an actor as a certain person as it is. For example, just a few weeks back, I was watching a 1970s Western drama with Kurt Douglas and Alan Hale Jr., who had a small role in it. It wasn't fair, but every time I saw Hale, I wanted to yell, Skipper! Newhart had previously been successful, going from playing a psychologist in the Bob Newhart show to an owner of a Vermont inn who had a local talk show in Newhart. But for some reason, in his new series, where he played in a situation comedy about a comic book artist, it didn't catch on. As I tried to figure out why, I noticed that it started out with a much better supporting cast than that of the Eddie Griffith and the Dick Van Dyke shows in their comeback programs. And it was markedly better than the one Lucille Ball did. While Newhart's characters were not as strong as the ones in his first two series, they weren't horrible either. In his new series, it had a character named Harlan Stoll. Harlan Stone, I'm honored to meet you. He aids Bob in trying to revive a superhero comic book character named Mad Dog that Bob had created years ago. Harlan writes the dialogue for New Art's comic and wants to turn Mad Dog into a bloodthirsty vigilante. The character of Harlan just didn't work for me, and the trouble was he was one of the main characters. It seems like they weren't sure who he was supposed to be, an angry sociopath or a scared and depressed man who you kind of felt sorry for. You are truly one of the all-time greats in our industry. Thank you very much. I just wanted to tell you that in case we crash and burn and I get the urge to rip your head off and spit down your throat. Don't, don't you have somebody on, on the phone? Oh, right. Thanks. You tell those snakes down in marketing they met their mongoose. If they mess with me, I'll swallow them whole and spit out their eyes. Come on in, Bob. I found his dramatic mood swings and his split personality a bit irritating. When he went out the window and walked out onto the ledge after hearing Bob talk about the hopelessness of trying to draw on a blank page, I was kind of hoping he'd jump, and that would be that for that character. In fairness, I noticed in later episodes that they dialed down his manic behavior back quite a bit. Another problem I noticed was there wasn't much real dialogue or conversation, just a lot of insults and rapid one-liners to set up punchlines. Little Bobby McKay, how many years has it been? Did you touch my stuff? Nobody can touch his bold, visionary graphics. It's good, huh? If you go for that kind of crap. 
Some were funny, but many weren't. With all that said, I thought it was a fairly decent show, certainly better than many other situation comedies, and it always takes a while for a cast to gel. But Bob underperformed, never cracking through to the top 60 programs in the ratings. In May of 1993, CBS pulled it from its schedule. All the other comedies CBS had on that night were canceled. I'm assuming that because of Newhart's reputation and previous successes, the show was brought back for a second season. But big changes were made. Harlan Stone was gone for good. Glenn caught. But so were many others. As in the new Dick Van Dyke show, aside from his TV family, all the other characters were gone for good, too. That's not the sign of a healthy show. So the series came back the next season radically different. Bob, along with all the people he'd worked with on his comic book, were fired. Bob starts the new season unemployed. Fortunately, the greeting card company that he'd worked for previously called and they wanted him back. It seems his previous boss ran off with his dental hygienist, and now his ex-wife is running Schmidt Greeting Cards. They brought in Betty White to play the part, and she not only wants Bob back, but she made him president of the company. I was amazed at how much better the show was. Betty White really added to the quality of the program, and Jerry Burns, who played her snarky, resentful, and underachieving son, was hilarious. The guy really knows how to deliver a line. Dramatic? You want to see dramatic? I quit! <laughs> this is your coat. I could have done without Bob's secretary. Her acting was weak and her character was unlikable. Do, uh, do I have any appointments? I don't know. Do you? In real life, she'd have been let go for laziness and a bad attitude. The constant one-liner jokes and put-downs were gone for the most part, replaced with real conversations that had great setups for jokes. But while the show was greatly improved, unfortunately, it was too late. People who had watched the first season and didn't like it had moved on. By October of 1993, the show had dropped to 74th place in the ratings. It's really too bad that this series got off to a rough start because I think if it had started out with this second cast, Newhart most likely would have had his third series hit. Just a short aside, as I watched this series, it brought to mind another series from 1969 about a cartoonist starring William Wyndham called My World and Welcome to It. I wonder how many recall that one. Wyndham was playing real-life writer and cartoonist James Thurber. Back in the day, I loved how they combined animation with the actors in the series. It got all sorts of critical praise, but like the series Bob, it didn't last long. It was canceled after only 26 episodes. If anyone's interested, maybe I'll cover that one in a future show. I wonder how many of you watched Newhart's third series back in 1992. If not, maybe you watched it on YouTube. What do you think? Were your impressions of that first cast the same as mine? Share your thoughts and comments below. As always, thanks for stopping by, and I hope I made you say... <laughs> I, I did yeah. not know that. Is that weird? Is that wild? Brother, <laughs>